All right, so, uh, hi everyone. Um, welcome to uh, what I lovingly like to call the Badman Project. So, <coughs> I'll turn. There we go. So, um, alternatively called na 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 bad men. Yeah, because bad men, bad. Because bad men, space space, Batman, sound a lot alike. Whatever. I thought it was cute. I'm Gillis, for those of you who don't know me. I'm an AppSec engineer over at White Hat and lies. Uh, around 4,000 sites weekly. Uh, I've been in it for around three years or so, and uh, I was one of the first people to turn in a bug bounty on Google+, Plus, um, and I've received uh, quite a bit of money from the uh, Facebook bug bounty, which is awesome, by the way, and if you don't play with it, you should. And I make developers sweat, and not in the, you know, hey, you're kind of sexy, you know, I'm getting turned on. But, you know, in the, holy shit, you just broke my application. <laughs> I'm going to cry now. This is who I work for. Um, we do all kinds of software as a service and whatnot. All right, so first of all, uh, you, you hear a silly name like Badman. What do you think? You think, you know, holy crap, someone came up with a horrible, horrible catchphrase for a horrible, horrible uh, terminology. Well, it means bad admin, um, and a bad admin is basically a web application developer who, through either laziness or ignorance, doesn't alter the uh, default configuration of their CMS uh, install. Now, <coughs> It can also be the actual CMS developer who, you know, how many of us actually think that including hard-coded pass, like backdoor passwords into a, uh, <laughs> into something that's used by millions and millions of people is a good idea? It's an awesome idea. Huzzah. All right, so if you include, if you include hard-coded passwords into your CMS, you automatically fail. I'm sorry, but you lose so much respect. Um, or, you know, hard-coded fast phrases for administrative functionality. Is it really a problem? Now, you'd like to think that as an industry, we've gotten the message across that at least, at least, you need to change the default file path for your logins, for your admin logins. No. Just, just for slash admin and admin login.php, there's over 10 million records on the internet that are indexable by Google. This isn't, cus this isn't including customized strings such as, you know, slash peer, or slash renovatio, or any of these others uh, unique names. There are still defaults. Now, are these good targets? Now, there's a lot of discussion of cyber war and all this other stuff, but in state versus state uh, warfare, this is the type of recon you do. It, you would do, you know, a search for a specific uh, uh, top-level domain, and with China, uh, there are somewhere around two million results. Now, an interesting fact, anytime I search for this string, plus either .cn or .ir, China or Iran, Google would automatically uh, make me do a CAPTCHA for any requests. So it makes me wonder, just as an aside, if there is a government agency out there doing massive amounts of searches for uh, foreign targets. So what can you get just through a URL? Now, 
a lot of us know this, or at least I expect you do, um, but a lot of uh, custom CMSs, they have uh, unique admin logins. So in this case, um, Peer has a specific default file path and parameter that's passed. Now, if you can hit that, you can pretty well identify the CMS. Even if they've changed uh, the actual page that, you, that is returned when you visit there, you can tell what it is. Same with Renovatio and same with about 35% of the uh, actual database. You know, they have uh, either the CMS name or version number in the actual uh, URL string. Now, <clears throat> basically, what this can do is allow me, as an attacker, with absolutely no effort, just going in and checking for a 200 response from your server for this specific uh, URL string. If I get a 200 response, I already know what you're running without having to do any work. And that can allow me to find uh, vulnerabilities that are absolutely specific to that framework. Now, the project was born out of frustration with, you know, having to spend, you know, 45 minutes to an hour researching this, you know, on every single freaking pen test. If you look back through uh, some of the projects in the past 10 years, there's been a lot of focus on hardware passwords. Uh, Fino Elite did an amazing, amazing job assembling a hardware password list um, back in 2007, 2008. It's still maintained, and it's one of the most comprehensive out there that I've seen. But there's no equivalent of that for web application security. So I decided to um, at least attempt to assemble something along the same lines. Um, now, where I work is the TRC, the Threat Research Center. On average, we spend 45 minutes to an hour and a half coming up with custom um, uh, attack vectors. And I wanted to assemble all of that information in one easy to use place so that you could reduce the amount of time that you actually have to spend and invest in research by a factor of five to six times. So, this is my project. Uh, this is a little interface that I've come up with. Um, you can see basically all of the uh, individual CMSs listed. Uh, there's over 150 actual records in the database. I had no freaking idea that there were this many CMSs out there. And each one of them has a unique configuration, a unique uh, attack methodology associated with it. And they're all uh, alphabetical and whatnot because, you know, OCD and whatnot. Now, <clears throat> there's the admin login URL. Uh, and when I say that, it, this is where the attacker goes um, by default to access the administrative login functionality. So sometimes it's accessed by a specified port, but other times it is, uh, it is just simply a resource uh, parameter added onto the end of it. Now, <clears throat> uh, Hippo CMS, for example, uses, uh, you know, if you're just trying to append slash CMS to the end of it, typically it won't work. However, you ha you, if you append uh, port 8080 to the end, uh, you get access to the admin uh, login. Now, occasionally, um, so with, a, uh, with a CMS such as uh, Bricolage or Cascade, you'll log in in the same spot as all the other users. Um, now, there's also the username password. Um, what I've included is the uh, username password combo of the highest privileged user um, that is included by default uh, so that <coughs> you can uh, 
get the most access possible with the least amount of research required. Um, and in rare cases, uh, if there are uh, authentication bypasses available, I include links to those so you don't have to worry about uh, worry about actually authenticating. You can just do whatever the hell you want. Now, um, I also include uh, additional documentation. So uh, you have an easy one-hit source of all of the uh, all of the configuration options that are available to the administrators of the uh, application. And there's also the known exploits link at the very bottom of the page. Um, I've I've elected to use exploits download um, because I also use OSVDB, but um, unfortunately, it seems as if uh, OSVDB isn't as comprehensive with uh, web application uh, like CMSs and whatnot, which is unfortunate because they're the superior platform. I'd like to see them go at least focus a little bit more on web applications. And it's a good starting place to find uh, weak spots in the actual coding of the application. So <clears throat> even though uh, certain vulnerabilities may have been patched, you can see where the logical fallacies lie in the actual coding of the application. Is the developer lazy in their encoding methods? You know, do they not care about authentication? Are you able to su supply your own cookies or whatever else? Now, just a quick analysis of um, some of the records I was able to find. Um, the most common default in 2012 is still admin admin. Case sensitivity, that is the exception. It is not the rule by any means. Um, even the applications that like to say that they are case sensitive, uh, oftentimes you're able to uh, completely reverse the uh, case sensitivity set. So say the first, uh, the first character is capitalized. Instead of doing that, making it uh, lowercase and all the other characters uh, capitalized. So it's checking for the difference, uh, not the actual string. Um, old platforms, holy crap. Uh, there, there are uh, platforms on the list which date back to 2001. They're not in wide usage, but they are, are still in rather significant usage on the internet. Now, <laughs> of course, the most entertaining default was God password. This was from a uh, CMS called PHP Nuke, or, or PHP Nuke from back in 2006. Um, that uh, you know, just like uh, Serial said, you know, there's something about sysops that just love to use God. It's the whole you know default male ego thing. All right, so. Told you a little about a little bit about um, the actual problem of you know default admin credentials on the internet, but surely this can't be in like a wide attack vector. So the Utah C, uh, chief technical officer actually had to resign over this vulnerability. There were five hundred thousand. 500,000 social security numbers that were taken because of a single default password that allowed you to reset admin passwords across the board on their network. Um, basically, uh, a crew out of Eastern Europe broke in and sold off all of the names and there was so much identity theft. And basically, their entire security team got canned. Uh, and they ha they're having to build it from the uh, ground up. Now, 
That looks like something from the mid-90s, doesn't it? Would you be surprised if I told you this was March of this year? <gasps> yeah. Um, and the Verizon uh, breach report uh, states that about 44 to 50, 44% uh, of their analyzed breaches uh, could be attributed to uh, a lack of uh, varied passwords and or easily guessable passwords. Now, there's a distinct difference actually um, in larger and smaller organizations. Um, smaller orgs is 44. Larger, it drops down to nine. I think this is rather easily attributable to uh, smaller organizations not thinking they have the actual money to invest in security. You know, you're solely profit driven, you're solely wanting to get bigger. And you don't think about the security of the product. And, you know, how much work does it take to change a password? Like, all it takes is a decent mindset for security. Now, what can an attacker get with a default password? This is from an actual test, um, a actual client site. I can't say any names, and all of the data has been uh, homogenized. However, let's walk through this real quick. So these strings up here, you'll notice uh, removed a legal value. Now, I was able to get to all of this through a basic authorization prompt with the default lowercase admin, lowercase admin, which brought me to a search server uh, called UltraSeq. And it basically controlled uh, 10 to 15 different SQL servers and any associated blacklist, whitelist information uh, regarding that. Now, it tells you exactly what is on the blacklist what characters, what strings, um, what literal uh, translations it's doing. And it's useful uh, if I'm an attacker and I don't just want to see what's on your site, I want to actually attack your user base. This is what I'm going to use to actually refine my attack. Also gives me uh, internal IP addresses. So if I use this as a pivot point, I have all of your internal information that I need to launch an internal attack. So in this case, you have uh, the address, the DB name, the, uh, the host name, any associated languages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, basically give me all of your specs about your network setup. Also, you go further down, tells me exactly what server operating system you're running, uh, what patch version, what uh, Let's see, what patch version, what distribution, uh, any distribution comments, et cetera, et cetera. You can guess why that's useful. Now, also, I get a click history of all of your admins. So guess what? I can tell exactly when your admins log in. I can tell when they want to patch. I can tell when your admins were too obsessed with porn that they forgot that they had a uh, uh, server upgrade running. And if they only log in twice a week, guess when I'm not going to be attacking the site? <laughs> exactly. Uh, also uh, gave me uh, internal file paths and uh, the actual buffer size of the uh, designated uh, temporary storage, as well as the actual directory listing of uh, the internal file paths. So I got to see exactly where they were storing their temp files and, you know, usefully where I would need to break out of to get a directory traversal attack. This is where it gets fun. So. I, of course, I had to censor everything because they were client-specific usernames. However, um, 
needless to say, I, I was able to assign myself uh, admin status over any of the designated SQL servers. Uh, I was able to change passwords for any existing users. I was able to remove access, delete accounts, all that fun stuff. And here's the scary part. This little uh, web app had a power button. See that down there? That one little button allowed me to turn off all 15 SQL servers. All 15. It actually executed a cut power command to their server cluster. What the fuck? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, it's not the best idea in the world, first of all. If you're a web developer, don't code in a power button. No matter how useful it may seem, unless you have a, you know, you require your admin to use actual gold flakes to execute the request. And if you find that technology, please let me know. <laughs> So, also, in addition to that, I was able to disable um, any and all controls that were uh, actually protecting the site. I was able to dis, uh, disable the blacklist, uh, uh, enable logging. So, in case you weren't aware, um, oftentimes if uh, logging is enabled on a web application, you can get remote file inclusion simply through URL tampering. So if you're able to uh, pollute the actual, uh, the actual log files that are being executed, you're able to break out of the echo point and actually execute anything you want. Um, so you're able to disable uh, SQL injection protection, uh, enable directory traversal, um, allow attackers to access other default locations, and uh, check this out. Down here, that little string there called uh, SSL key list. Yeah, that gave me the entire SSL key list, SSL passwords, um, the SSL port, uh, the email address of the sysadmin, um, and all kinds of other useful things. Oh, is that a network user, uh, domain username? Why, yes, yes it is. <laughs> all right, so the takeaway from this that I want you all to take is, first of all, change your freaking passwords. It's not that hard. Second of all, uh, if you want uh, to do a um, actual, uh, A actual test with the uh, stuff and the things and whatnot. It's uh, whitehatsec.com slash badmen slash badmen.html, which will take you to this. This is my little live tool. Um, that you can go to and find the actual defaults. I'm currently working to go through and convert it to an XML form so you can actually import it into any tool that you want um, and basically use it to do some very rudimentary fingerprinting of uh, CMSs. Nothing along the lines of WordPress scan. Uh, you know, I haven't gotten into version information on the specific. Uh, on the specific actual CMSs, but just to show you how it works real quick, um, scroll down and there's all of these different uh, CMSs. Uh, and for example, if you go to, let's go to PHP slash, you get the, uh, you can get, uh, this, is, this is one where you can actually uh, bypass the authentication but you'll see, uh, you click on it, it drops down. Uh, you get the admin login, username, password, and in this case, the additional URL, which is the actual authentication bypass 
for the application. Um, get the comments. Uh, sometimes um, there will be uh, proprietary encryption algorithms that uh, use a static key. In this case, the site key uh, that they use by default is a PHP web log. And uh, the exploits link, which is uh, the actual URL for any exploits. And uh, yeah, if y'all have any questions or would like to talk to me or call me an asshole, I'll be around. Thank you.